Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Larcy. Welcome back to the channel. Got a great video for you today. It's going to be awesome. In fact, literally the sky's the limit on this video because we're going to be talking about skies in Luminar Neo. I'm going to show you how to change out a sky in the software. I'll even show you how to bring in your own images, uh, your own skies, and incorporate them into another image to make it a little more exciting. I'm even going to have uh, something at the end. I'm going to show you how to get uh, a couple of free skies that you can use on your own images. So we've got a lot to cover. It's going to be really cool. I think you're going to enjoy it. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here's the image we're going to be working with today. Uh, we've got this bridge going across the river. And I think this will be a good example image because we've got a relatively empty sky and we've got some water here so we'll be able to make sure that the foreground reflects what's happening up here in the sky and uh, make sure the whole thing works together. So I think this will be a great sample image to use. As usual, we're going to start out by making a copy of this layer. We'll just call this Neo. That way if we decide we don't like it, it's just on its own layer and we dump it. But uh, I'm going to start out with that and let's jump into the software. All right, so we're going to bypass presets and go right to edit just so we can kind of use the actual tools over here. And I'm going to show you kind of three different things. One, just enhancing the clouds that are already there. How to replace a sky just using one of the stock clouds that comes with the software. And then how to do it with your own clouds. So kind of increasing difficulty as we go. So let's we'll start out with this enhance feature at the top and so this is a, there's not much clouds here there's just a trace of clouds here in the sky but let's say you don't want to bring in a different sky you just want to enhance what you have there hopefully you've got a little more than this but uh, you're gonna click on enhance and there's just this sky enhancer right here I mean it could not be simpler than just basically dragging this across and you can see it's gonna give it a nice color bring out what clouds you do have you can play with the accent as well which is going to give you a little bit more pump uh, of color and contrast and things through the whole image, not just the sky. So uh, you can bump up that sky in this and just right there really is from there to there is I, I think much better. So uh, that's a really easy one. If you don't want to bother with skies, just go ahead and uh, enhance it this way. You do have a masking feature here. So if for some reason, you want to do this accent and things, but you don't want it affecting the side of the building or whatever. You can come in and mask that out or vice versa and things like that. So um, that's basically how all that works. But basically the easy way of doing that sky is just in under enhance, slide over this sky enhancer to uh, whatever you like. And uh, that will give you a much nicer sky really easily. But let's dump that and decide that we want to go ahead and add a whole new sky to this. So we're going to go to the next one down, which is Sky AI. And we've got a whole bunch more things in here. And what you want to do is go ahead and go to Sky Selections. And you've got all these different clouds in here. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that the clouds match the scene. And uh, what I mean by that is if a day like this where there's really bright sun coming through, you wouldn't want a sky that was just solid clouds because then it wouldn't make sense. If the sky is solid clouds, how is the sun even peeking through to make these rays of light? That doesn't make sense. Uh, you wouldn't want clouds where the sun is setting on this side, but clearly the sun's coming from this side. So you want to make sure that things match up when you're choosing skies. And um, we can kind of look at a bunch of the ones they have in here. So let's just start right up here and take the very first one. When you click on one, it's going to go ahead, decide where it needs to go. It's going to mask it. And you can see it does a really good job of masking. It's even leaving like this little crane up here and things. Um, and it pops one in. Now, this one works pretty well, I think, actually. Um, 
because you know the sun is, is coming from kind of up this direction more from above but there's there's gaps so it's conceivable that the sun can be coming through so this one works as opposed to let me just kind of show you a like this one where it's clearly a super muddy kind of sky and you can see the sun rays coming down here that doesn't make sense with this at all so you have gotta avoid things like that happening the other thing you've got to avoid is when you are, let's say we drop in one of these that's clearly a uh, you know very dramatic type scene and the sky is this color, you want to make sure that the water changes as well and Luminar is really good about doing that and we can tell by, if I, I'm going to switch back to this other sky and watch the water when the sky changes. See how that blue part changes to match the color you see it there you really see it in this section right here as I change skies how Luminar is also changing the reflection in the water which is really nice um, and if you're doing this manually you've got to make sure that you're doing that as well that you're picking um, colors down here that match up here now one thing you can do, uh, an image like this where it looks to me more like the sun's coming from a little bit more from the left, what you can do is you can just go with this sky like we have right here whoops, and play around with the orientation. You can flip it to that way. Now we get the sun coming this way. You can also adjust the positioning up or down. Um, that comes in handy like here where we've got this horizon line where the sky just stops and you might want to bring it down. You might want, for example, this big cloud to be sitting right inside that gap or something like that. Depends on what you want. There's not really a right or wrong answer, but sometimes this will allow you to fix things by kind of sliding it around. Maybe it kind of fills the sky a little more that way. Your scene relighting is here, and that's where it's taking the colors up here and um, relighting the scene. Now this one matches a little bit more with how the scene already was so you won't see it as much but under that scenery lighting that is where you can go through and fine-tune that a little bit if you put in a really super warm sky and you don't feel that the foreground looks warm enough um, that's where you can fix that you can also mess with the sky here under adjustments uh, where you can do things like if you think the clouds are too sharp for example you can you can soften them. You can add grain. If you're adding them to a really grainy image but your clouds are were shot on a better camera and don't have nearly as much grain, you can add grain to them to grind maybe not that much, but uh, you can start adding grain until they match. It's all going to be about making sure that they match the um, scene that they're in, both in image quality, image color, all those type things. You can also kind of warm things up a little bit like this. So you've got a lot of control you can do. A lot of times, honestly, you can just click on one of these and Luminar does a good job of identifying it and um, doing the right things. Get rid of that one more time. And let's take a look at how to do it with our own skies, because really that's the way you want to do it, especially if you know, this is something that you're doing that you're going to enter in a competition, for example. You want it to be all your work, and so you want to have your own skies that you're adding in. You don't want to use a sky that someone else photographed. So one thing you're going to want to get in the habit of is when you're at a place, go ahead and um, photograph the skies. When you get up and you're driving around and maybe you're just doing some sightseeing that day and not doing landscape photography per se, and you notice, wow, the clouds look great today. Go ahead and get some pictures of those clouds and keep them somewhere else on your hard drive. You know, and it's really nice too if you can keep them sorted or tag them if you're good at that type thing. Tag them with where they were because you know different parts of the world uh, have different looking clouds sometimes, and you'll see where someone will say, well, in this part of the country, we don't ever get that type of cloud. Um, and it'll make the image look not authentic and, and things like that. So it really helps to start building up that cloud catalog and it really gets going pretty quickly. And the beautiful thing about it is you can do it just wherever you live even. You can just, as you're out driving around and you notice a wonderful cloud day, maybe after there was a storm the night before or something like that, um, take some photographs and start building up that database. So 
Let's assume that you've got a few already, and what I'm going to do now is show you how to add one. What you're going to do is just go to the very bottom, you're going to scroll through all these guys down to the bottom, and you'll see this plus. And when you hit the plus, it's going to bring up this folder. We're going to go to the folder where I have some clouds sitting here, and I've got uh, three different ones, but we'll just grab the first one. And I'm going to take a look and drop it in. See, this one's way too muddy for this scene. That's not going to work for that. So let's jump down to another one. Let's just try number three. Okay. So this is a great example of how we're going to have to adjust the vertical positioning. You know, if you're using one of the Luminar ones, they've kind of done a lot of this for you. If you're using your own, you're going to have to go ahead and... Um, adjust some of these things. But we can try bringing this down. Maybe about like that. You could see what that looks like. We could um, let's see how that is. We could try flipping it. Kind of even like that better. Uh, then you could go through here and uh, decide if you want to maybe warm it up a little bit. I think you can see there, that's pretty good. Um, so that's pretty much how you would add those. Now, what you can do from there, let's go ahead and add just that second one in just for grin. So I've got all three of these in here. All right, probably need to flip that one. So this is a very big dramatic one. Um, bring that down like that. Not sure how I like it. The, this one's almost too big, but uh, for the sake of our discussion, let's just leave it on there. Just have a huge, giant, dramatic cloud back there. And uh, then you'll have that like that. Again, you go through, make all these different adjustments. You can do the relighting to make sure the scene uh, adjusts to that sky. And basically, that's going to do it for you. Now, you can come back here into Enhance and enhance that sky more. You can accent some more and just like that so now again I don't know that these three clouds that I had here are all uh, exact great matches for what you would want but um, just kind of give you an idea of how to bring in your own and it is going to be a little more hit or miss you know the nice thing about what they've done here with their clouds is they've kind of gone through and pre-selected ones that are going to work really well uh, in images and there is a little bit of an, an art to getting the, an image that's going to work well for this type of thing and so it's going to be a bit of trial and error but that's the way you do it if you want to add in your own. Now there are some other options. If you want to add some more clouds to your collection another thing you can do is do the get more skies and that will pull up the uh, Luminar uh, sales page here where you can see all the different people selling their different skies. And if you look around, you will even find uh, some free ones. Here's this California Clear Skies that's actually free. So uh, you can download these uh, skies um, and it'll have them there in your software to use next time. Or you can get any of these where you, you purchase them. You know, everything from lightning to uh, galaxies, all kinds of wild thing. So especially if this is just something you're doing for your own and um, you don't need it to be your work throughout the image, there's a lot of uh, really nice ones that you can find through here and um, relatively inexpensive for you know the amount of uses you can get out of them. Uh, one other thing that I will tell you as far as ways you can get some clouds for free is I stumbled onto this a while back. Uh, it's called New Layer, and I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. I can't really speak to them at all, whether they're great or horrible, but there's stuff like this where um, they've got 16 free skies that are set up for Luminar, and uh, it, it's a free download. So um, that's something you can check out and uh, try and add some clouds that way. Or like I say, you could go through the Luminar route, or you just add your own. And... Um, through the mix of those, you ought to have access to just millions and millions of cloud images. And then it just comes down to, again, a matter of picking the one that uh, works the best and fits the scene and you know makes the image look better.
There you go, it's a really handy tool, not too difficult to use. Don't forget there's a link in the comments below where you can go get your own free skies to add to the ones that already come with Luminar and just kind of start building up that sky library. It really is helpful. If you haven't done so already, please take a second to subscribe. It really does help the channel. And make sure you ring the bell so that you know when new videos come out. But that's all I've got for this week. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.